Okay, so what you can see here, you see a megalithic wall that way, and then a megalithic wall here, and you see the pattern of knobs. <laughs> Again, some suggest that the knobs could have been some kind of coded language. And then in the center, you have the, this is the Wadi construction, and then on top of the megalithic, you have the Wadi construction. <laughs> and at the bottom there, you can also see that it's megalithic. So the megalithic wall originally went quite a, a distance this way. <laughs> and then also the reason why there are two openings is that one was for getting out of Cusco, one was for coming into Cusco. And what they had was they had physicians located at the entrance and the exit so that anybody entering Cusco or exiting would be checked to see if they had any communicable diseases. And if they did, they were turned away. So you can see clearly there was some kind of ancient cataclysmic damage that happened to the megalithic part because you'll see vertical cracks and that wouldn't be from settling, that would be from some kind of major disturbance. And then the quarry is in this direction, about a quarter of a mile on the left-hand side. We're going to drive past it. And it's called Rumi Kolka. Rumi means stole, uh, stone, and Kolka means storage, which is a logical way to describe a quarry, storage place of stone. Again, the Inca-style stairs you see protruding out of the wall. and some cracks. So the curious knobs we see at the Inti Punku or Sun Gate, just south of Cusco. In this case, they're in a row. So is it possible that this is some kind of coded language that was understood in the very distant past? And then the difference between the ancient megalithic style of construction and the much, much later Wadi and Inca period construction. traditional style of Inca stairs embedded into the formation itself, going up and up and up to the top. And once again, the difference between Wadi slash Inca construction and the much, much older megalithic. And there's one knob sticking out on the other wall we saw several in a row. So at the ancient Inca site called Tipong, behind this hill is a snow-capped glacial mountain. That is the source of the water. 
So the water comes down through an aqueduct system, enters through here, comes through here as one. And separates into two, returns into one. Divides into four. And then becomes one again. So from the one source coming down, separating into two, masculine and feminine, recombining into one, separating into four, which are the four quarters of the Inca world, and reassembling again into one. Massive Inca engineering project. Genius Inca water movement system here at Tipong. The horizontal water is feminine, the vertical water is masculine. As the water heads down in the masculine vertical way, it hits the stone. And that is where some of the impurities come out and then the water continues to move along the horizontal. until it reaches another vertical. From here, it goes down through the agricultural systems in the lower valley. And from there, it pours into what's called the Sacred River, which then pours into tributaries of the Amazon River, then into the Amazon itself, and then eventually out the Atlantic Ocean. So we are at a site called the Temple of Wiracocha, outside or south of Cusco. And the most obvious thing you can see about it is you have megalithic work on the bottom of the wall and then adobe work on top of the wall. So the adobe work was done by the Inca prior to the Spanish conquest. And the megalithic predates any known culture. We know it probably dates back to at least 13,000 plus years. And the only megalithic aspect was this one wall, probably went up much, much higher than it does. Or uh, did in Inca times, but was damaged by an earthquake and possibly a solar flare from the sun because the Western surfaces are scorched, burnt, whereas the Eastern surfaces are not. And then we have these central, or these pillars here, which were hollow, the stone on the outside, and then adobe material on the inside. One of the last that exists, still exists, is this one at the end. You can see stone at the bottom, making it strong, and then adobe or adobe higher up. And then still at the site called the Temple of Huiracocha, we have these circular buildings which are called Colca. They were storage facilities for this entire area for storing food. The entrance would be to the east for sunrise. And this is where corn 
and potatoes and other native products would be stored. Uh, the circular structure al allows for the air to circulate much more easily than if it was a square or rectangular building. And then buildings such as this would either be a temple and or a habitation place. So it's again called the Temple of Wiracocha at a site called Rachi, traveling south from Cusco to the city of Puno in Peru. Walking onto the floating islands of the Uros people in Lake Titicaca, Bolivia. This is tapado. <laughs> okay, well, this is uh, one of the 90 floating islands. All of them look like this one. Different families and uh, a different number of families from each island. There are seven families here. Actually, from Maximo. Maximo is the president of the island. Wailiki. 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 The president. <laughs> On another one of the Uros floating islands with Wilco Apasa, Lake Titicaca. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay